The Sixth Knot, Volume Five, Chapter One. Sutra. Ananda put his palms together, bowed, and said to the Buddha, "Having heard the Buddha's unbounded, greatly compassionate, pure, everlasting, true, and actual expression of Dharma, I still have not understood the sequence for releasing the knots, such that when the six are untied, the one is gone also. I hope." I only hope you will be compassionate and once again take pity on this assembly and on those of the future by bestowing the sounds of drama on us and wash and rise away our heavy defilements. Commentary: Ananda put his palms together, bowed, and said to the Buddha, "Having heard the Buddha's unbounded, greatly compassionate, pure, everlasting." True and natural expression of Dharma. I still have not understood the principle whereby, where the six are untied, the one is gone also. I haven't yet figured out the sequence for releasing the knots. I only hope you will be compassionate and once again take pity on this assembly, all the people gathered here, and on those of the future great assemblies of beings. Take pity by bestowing the sounds of Dharma on us. Make a gift to all living beings of the expression of the Buddha Dharma to wash and rise away our heavy defilements. Just as with vegetables, first you wash them, and then, fearing they might not be completely clean, you rise them again. Defilements may be heavy or serious enough to cause us to fall into lower states of being. The defilements refer to our greed, hatred, and stupidity. Ananda seeks further clarification. Sutra. Then, upon the lion's throne, the first comer straightened his nirvana robes, arranged his samgati, took hold of the table made of the seven gems, reached out onto the table with his hand, and picked up a flowered cloth. Given him by the Suyama God. Commentary. Then, upon the lion's throne, the first common, the drama seat that Shakyamuni Buddha was sitting on, was called a lion's throne. It was so named to indicate that the Buddha speaking of drama was like the roar of lion. When the lion roars, all other beasts tremble. When the Buddha speaks Dharma, the heavenly demons and externalists are frightened. He is written in his Nirvana robes. Nirvana robes refers to the Buddha's inner clothing, and arranged is a samgati. The samgati is the outer sash, the perfect robe or great robe. He took hold of the table made of the seven gems. The table placed before the Buddha was made of gold, silver, lapis lazuli, crystal, mother of pearl, red pearls, and carnelian. Lapis lazuli is sometimes described as thick crystal. Crystal may not seem so special in this day and age when grass is so prevalent, but in these early times, crystal was hard to come by, so it was considered a precious gem. Mother of pearl sometimes has a pattern like a cut tracks in it. Carnelian is likened to horse brains in its shape. It is red and white in color. He then reached out onto the table with his hand and picked up a flowered cloth given by, given him by the Suryama God. Suryama heaven is the heaven of well divided time. Flowered cloth refers to a long hand tower made of layered flowers. In India, such towers were valued highly, and this one was especially so, since it was a gift to Shakyamuni Buddha from the ruling god of the Suryama heaven. Sutra then, as the assembly watched, he tied it into a knot and showed it to Ananda, asking, "What is this called?" Ananda and the Great Assembly answered together, "It's called a knot." Then the first Kaman tied another knot in the cloth of layered flowers and asked Ananda again, "What is this called?" 
Another in the grid assembly once again answered together. A2 is called a knot. He continued in this pattern until he had tied six knots in the cloth of layered flowers. As he made each knot, he held it up to Ananda and asked, What is this called? And each time Ananda and the great assembly answered the Buddha in the same way, It is called a knot. Commentary Then, as the assembly watched, he tied it into a knot. The Buddha, as if playing a game with children, took up the cloth of layered flowers and tied it in knots. While he was sitting there before the great assembly, he showed it to Ananda, asking, What is this called? He let Ananda see the knot and asked him what it was. Ananda and the great assembly answered together, It's called a knot. Then the first common tied another knot in the cloth of layered flowers and asked Ananda again, What is this called? He asked him the same thing over again. Ananda and the Great Assembly once again answered together. It too is called a knot. They gave the same answer. He continued in this pattern until he had tied six knots in the cloth of layered flowers. In all, he tied six knots in the towel. As he made each knot, he held it up to Ananda and asked, What is this called? And each time Ananda in the Great Assembly answered the Buddha in the same way, it is called a knot. The cloth of layered flowers represents the nature of the treasury of the first common. The six knots, the six knots tied in it represent the six sense organs. Sutra, the Buddha said to Ananda, When I first tied the cloth, you called it a knot. Since the cloth of layered flowers is basically a single strip, how can you call the second, the third ties knots as well? Commentary, the cloth is just one piece, which you said was a knot. So how can you call the second, the third ties in it knots as well? The Buddha deliberately questioned Ananda in this way. Sutra, Ananda said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, this cloth of woven layered flowers is just one piece, but as I consider it, when the first common makes one tie, it is called a knot. If you were to make a hundred ties, they would be called a hundred knots. How much the more so with this cloth, which has exactly six knots, not seven or five? Why does the first common allow me to call only the first tie a knot and not the second or third ties? Commentary, Ananda said to the Buddha. Ananda replied to the Buddha's squeezing. Won't honored one, this cloth of woven layered flowers is just one piece. The precious cloth of layered flowers in a single strip. But as I consider it, when the first common makes one tie, it is called a knot. If you were to make a hundred ties, it would be called a hundred knots. Every one of those hundred can be called a knot. How much the more so with this cloth, which has exactly six knots, not seven or five. You will have only tied six knots in this strip of cloth. You didn't go on to tie seven knots, nor did you stop at five. Why does the first common allow me to call only the first tie a knot and not the second or third ties? Buddha, why do you only admit that? The first tie is called a knot and don't recognize the second and the third as knots. What's the principle behind this? Sutra. The Buddha told Ananda, you know that this precious cloth of flowers is basically one strip, but when I made six ties in it, you said it had six knots. As you carefully consider this, you will see that the substance of the cloth is the same. It is the knots that make the difference. Commentary. The Buddha listened to the Ananda to Ananda's answer with amusement. Of course, the six were all called knots. It's not that the first is called a knot and the others are not. The Buddha asked him that question to tease him, and Ananda insisted that all six could be called knots. This was for all the sake of debate. It was a point of argument, a principle to discuss, the Buddha told Ananda.
Do you know that this precious cloth of flowers is basically one strip? It's a single piece, but when I made six ties in it, you said it had six knots. You then counted it six knots. As you carefully consider this, look into this in minute detail, reflect upon it, you will see that the substance of the cloth is the same. It doesn't have so many names. It is the knots that makes make the difference. As soon as I, call, I added a knot, it became different. This demonstrates that the nature of the treasury of the first common is basically one. The six sense organs are not tied in it, but although there are six knots, the original substance of the treasury is still one. If you untie the, the six knots, not even one will remain. Sutra, what do you think? The first knot I tied was called number one, continuing until I come to the sixth knot. And as I now tie it, is it also number one? Commentary, what do you think? Ananda, what is your opinion? The first knot I tied was called number one. I continuing until I come to the sixth knot. And as I now tie it, is it also number one? Can the sixth one in turn be called number one? Sutra, no, won't honor one. If there are six knots, the sixth knot can never be called number one. In all my lives of learning with all my understanding, how could I now confuse the names of six knots? Commentary, Ananda said, absolutely not. You can't switch them. Number one is number one. You can't change number one so that it is called number six or change number six so that it is called number one. No one on earth one there. If there are six knots, the sixth knot can never be called number one. If there are six, the sixth is just the sixth and no matter what, it cannot turn into the first. In all my lives of learning, the I, Ananda, the learned one from Limitless Compass passed down to the present with all my understanding, what I have studied, what I have made my specialty, my specialty is to be well read and good at debate. When I call upon all my accumulated learning and use all my skill in debate, how could I now confuse the names of six knots? How could I mix up the names? How could I fail to keep them in order? Sutra the Buddha said, so it is. The six knots are not the same. Consider their origin. They are created from the one cloth. To confuse their order will not do. Commentary, the Buddha said, so it is. What you say is right. You can't change their names. You can't call the sixth one the first. The first one cannot be changed and called the sixth. You are absolutely right. The reason they cannot be interchanged because the six knots are not the same. Consider their origin. They are created from the one cloth. So confuse their order will not do. If you mix up the numerical order of the knots, it won't work. You say, that's right. Sutra, your six sense organs are also like this. In the midst or ultimate sameness, conclusive differences arise. Commentary. Originally, they are identical, but the eyes function as eyes, the ears function as ears, the nose functions as a nose, the tongue functions as a tongue, the body functions as a body, and the mind functions as the mind. Originally, they were one and the same, but at this point, they divide. Even then, it would be fine if they were together. They could all return their light and illumine within. The eyes could turn their light inward, the ears could listen within and hear the self-nature. The nose would not be turned by smells, the tongue would not be turned by taste, the body would not be turned by objects of touch, and the mind would not be influenced by dramas. If they could all, uh, could all work together and return the light, they would still be one. But they can't work together, the eyes see forms. The nose smells fragrances and is, in, is turned by them. The tongue tastes flavors and is turned by them. 
the body enjoys objects of torture and is turned by them, and the mind is influenced by dramas and is turned by them. What's important is not is to not follow after them, but ordinary people are unable to avoid following after them. Sutra, the Buddha said to Ananda, You certainly dislike the six knots and would like there to be just one cloth, but how can that be done? Ananda said, As long as these knots remain, there will be grounds for arguments about what is and what is not. Their very existence will lead to such distinctions as this knot not being that knot and that knot not being this one. But if on this day the first command unties them all so that no knots remain, then there will be no this and no that. There will not even be something called one. How much the less can there be six? The Buddha said, When the six untied, the one is gone. Is the same meaning. Commentary The Buddha said to Ananda, You certainly dislike these six knots. Is for sure you don't like the six knots, says Shakyamuni Buddha to his disciple. She would like to untie the six knots so they cease to be, and would like there to be just one cloth. She wants to make one out of them. But how can that be done? How can you get back to the one? To that basic substance. Ananda heard the Buddha's question and said, As long as these knots remain, there will be grounds for argument about what is and what is not right. Ananda admits, I would like to get rid of the six knots and have only one thing remaining. Because as long as the six are around, there will be disputes about them. The reason for contention is that there is distinction between this and that. Their very existence will lead to such distinctions as this not, not being that not and that not not being this one. In the midst of these various knots will arise arguments about what is right and what is wrong. This not the first one is not the sixth, and that not the sixth one is not the first. Distinctions arise regarding this and that. But if on this day the first common unties them all, so that no knots remain, then there will be no this and no that. There won't be a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth knot. There will not even be something called one. If the six knots are destroyed, there won't even be one knot. How much the less can there be six? The Buddha said, When the six are untied, the one is gone. Is the same meaning. Not bad, the Buddha told Ananda. You spoke that principle correctly. If you understand that principle, you can understand when the six are untied, the one is gone. For that is the same meaning. Are you clear about it now? Sutra, because from beginningless time your mind and nature have been made wide and rebellious, you have produced false knowledge and views. This falseness continue to, continues to arise without this uh, respite, and the wearisomeness of these views brings about objective dust. Commentary Because from beginningless time, your mind and nature have been made wider and rebellious. From beginningless compass on down to the present, your pure mind and your basic nature of true suchness. The self-nature has been made wide. Wide refers to your appearance of production, ignorance, which is innate. From the appearance of production, ignorance comes the discriminatory knowledge of dharmas, which is also innate. Wide refers to ignorance. Rebellious refers to the three subtle appearances discussed before. There are the appearance of karma, the appearance of turning, and the appearance of manifestation. The appearance of karma brings about the appearance of turning, which leads to the appearance of manifestation. This is very subtle, however, not something which ordinary people can discern. One unenlightened thought produces three subtle appearances. 
with the existence of these three appearances. The first knot is tight. The point at which you have produced false knowledge and views is when the experience of this becomes the condition from which these cross appearances arise.